Couldn't you just leave it be? Let... Let me go. Why are you doing this to me? You and the Baroness. Dr. Gebhardt, I don't know. Don't you understand what you are forcing me to do? You... You don't have to. It is almost over. You won't feel a thing. I am sorry you have to see all this. I should have used more chloroform. Yes, 
sir. Shall we begin? No, please. Shh. It's almost over. Thanks. A wet towel works miracles. I told you so. Out with it then. What were you doing down there? Inspector, at least let the constable recover his breath. He almost killed himself. Me? No. Dr. Gebhardt would have taken care of that for me. Where is he? Gebhardt? He's vanished without a trace. We'll search in the ship from top to bottom. One at a time. Tell me, Zelna. What did you find out? Dr. Gebhardt killed Baroness von Trebitz. Impossible. Do you have proof? Besides the fact that he wanted to kill me? But wasn't the doctor with you when the shot was fired? The shot that we heard was a recording. The Baroness had a tape recorder and good speakers in her cabin. Good enough to make the noise audible on the upper deck. Is that just your suspicion, or do you have proof? There's an audio tape in the medical center. The reel belongs to the tape player in the Baroness's cabin. And there's a sibling reel in her cabin that belongs to the recorder in the medical center. <sighs> After a few minutes, there's a loud bang on the audio tape. That's our gunshot. Where did Gebhardt get it from? He recorded it in the cargo hold. His tape recorder has a microphone, and I removed a bullet from one of the boxes down there. And it came from the murder weapon? Yes. I compared it to the other bullet in the inspector's cabin. Of course you did. All right. <laughs> Inspector Legrand. Let's pretend you're onto something. The shot we heard was just a recording. What happened next? We all ran to the Baroness's cabin. She lay comatose in a pool of blood. Dr. Gebhardt pushed past you so that you couldn't get too close to the Baroness. He examined her and pronounced her dead. There was no reason for us to doubt him. The shot, the blood, the Baroness lying there lifelessly. But she was only unconscious. Knocked out by the chloral hydrate that the doctor had poured into her glass shortly before. The doctor had a glass in his hand when you came in. He wanted to remove the evidence. But you gave me the glass instead, Captain De Conti, and unintentionally knocked me out as well. Nonsense. There was blood everywhere. And the Baroness is certainly dead enough, isn't she? Then who did shoot her? And when? She wasn't shot. She was poisoned. And yet I saw the hole in her chest with my own eyes. Aha! She must have been shot. Well, ingenious, where was she shot? As I already said, it was Dr. Gebhardt. He had the sleeping Baroness brought to the medical center, where he had all the time in the world to shoot her. A fine theory, but unfortunately incorrect. I examined the Baroness before she was taken away. She had a bullet wound in her chest. Besides which, she was already cold when we brought her to the medical center. All the same, it's worth considering the possibility. The doctor was alone in the cabin for a while. When the alarm went off, it was deafening. I couldn't even hear myself. And I found a pillow with burn marks. Could have been used to muffle a gunshot. And the blood? The blood wasn't real. 
Dr. Gebhardt mixed up a liquid that looked like fresh blood to the casual observer, but the liquid remained red instead of becoming darker and browner from exposure to the air. That meant he had to clean the body and get rid of the bedding. But the blood was already there when we first entered the cabin. Dr. Gebhardt was in the Baroness's cabin before the murder. He hid a surgical glove full of the red liquid under her sheet. The Baroness, dead tired, fell onto her bed, the glove burst, and the blood spread across the bed. I found the burst glove in the medical center. But why did he do it? What was his motive? Uh, Inspector? It had to do with the eye of the Sphinx. The Baroness was supposed to bring one of the keys to Cairo. So Dr. Gebhardt was the raven? I don't think so, but perhaps he was working with him. No, no, no. Do you have anything to contribute, Constable? Uh, uh confession, sir. Dr. Gebhardt was the raven. It's all here. He admits to everything. What does it say? It says, do you still remember, my dear Nico? The streets were wet with rain and the scent of roasted barley and fermenting yeast wafted over to us from the brewery. A dog barked until your shot struck down the innocent one. After that silence, not a single sound except for my soft steps fading on the wet cobblestone street. They made a hero of you and I, at last found peace, at least until the urge returned. Some of us are not made for retirement, my friend. I thought they would assign this case to you, and that thought pleased me. We'd finally find out who was truly the better man. And it pains me now to have to admit that you and your little gumshoe got the better of me. You drove me into a corner, forced me to make mistakes. I congratulate you on your triumph, but no one will confine the raven to a cage. There is but one way out, and that is by my own hand. Farewell, Raven Hunter R. Inspector Legrand! Inspector? I was right. I told them all, over and over again. But no one would listen. You think that Dr. Gebhardt was really the raven? The things Gebhardt describes in his letter aren't part of any police report. Only someone who was there would know them. Couldn't there have been others involved? One of the police, for instance. What if one of them changed sides? Why is it so hard for you to accept the simple truth? There was never a new raven. There was only ever the old one. And that was Dr. Gebhardt. The modus operandi doesn't match. The raven was not a killer. Legends are rarely what they seem to be, Constable Zelma. Then who was the man who was killed back then? William Jackson, a petty thief, committed some burglaries together with his brother. Talented, but not world class. And they thought he was the Raven. Some people thought it was part of his disguise. If you're a debonair master thief, what better disguise than pretending to be a common crook? From time to time you let them catch you, pulling small jobs, and no one ever imagines you're capable of a major heist. But you didn't believe it. I had my doubts, but everyone congratulated me, and those doubts were pushed aside. It was like being caught in a storm, but eventually the storm passed and my doubts were still there. 
But not this time? No doubts telling you that Gebhardt isn't our man? It must be him. What about the handwriting, the wording? Does the farewell letter match the Raven's other letters? Yes, it's his handwriting, his words. I've read all the Raven's letters, all of them, over and over again. I never thought it was possible. A resurrected Raven. The Raven was never dead. I shot the wrong man. But that man had the stolen goods, didn't he? So he must have been in league with the Raven. One could hardly call him innocent. Where do we go from here? We deliver the Eye and then our contact, Perry. A task force will compare all of Gephardt's known residences with the Raven's activity. And if there are any inconsistencies? You're welcome to keep an eye on the safe if you can't let it go. The ship will remain in Cairo for one day. That's all the time you'll have to catch your own Raven. I already have mine. Ah, you're one of Legrand's men, aren't you? My name is Anton Jakob Zellner. You've come just in time. Grace, my dachshund is missing. Uh, there may be more important matters for me to attend to, Mr... Director Abbas Mokhtar. And Grace isn't just a common dog. She's a purebred German dachshund, a champion. So... The exhibition will still open tonight. But of course. Everything has been arranged. The final preparations are almost complete. But one of the two exhibits won't be there. A terrible loss. A tragedy. That irreplaceable Egyptian cultural treasure has been stolen for the second time. The second time? What? Did you really believe that the Eye of the Sphinx was found lying on the banks of the Thames? Inspector Legrand, Professor Lucien, and Constable Oliver are overseeing the transportation of the safe. They should be here at any moment. I'll have a look around in the meantime. Do you think that's necessary? The Raven is dead, after all. If you mean Dr. Gebhardt, his body was never recovered. Nor the stolen Eye of the Sphinx, for that matter. It does us a great honor that the Inspector is concerned about us. But we have everything under control. Legrand isn't as concerned as he should be. But I am. Is the museum closed? Yes. Only carefully selected guests may enter the museum during preparations for the gala. And of course, you're one of them, Mr. Uh, Constable. What can you tell me about the museum's security system? One of the best on the market, and the second eye, will still be exhibited in our special treasure chamber, which is extra secure. Treasure chamber? See for yourself, to the right of the entrance. The eye is as safe as the British crown jewels. I think I'll have a look around the museum. Please do. There's a lot to see. And you let me know if you see Grace, won't you? I hope we find her before the great inspector arrives. Isn't it fantastic how he solved the murder on the ship? Le Grand? Of course. It's in all the newspapers. The murder of the wealthy Baroness von Trebitz, and how the great inspector Le Grand identified the murderer in just one day. It's the stuff legends are made of. You should count yourself lucky to have the chance to learn from him. What... what exactly do the newspapers say? Everything. It's fantastic. Someone on board must have informed the press immediately. Of course, it's a great advertising for us. The reporters will queue up tonight. And it was reported that Legrand found the murderer. Of course! Who else? 
Well, I wasn't exactly uninvolved. Of course. Le Grand surely has assistance. But honor to he who deserves to be honored. Right? Well then. Be seeing you, Constable. Grace! Here, Gracie! Oh, my sweetheart! Where are you? Oh, uh, Mr. Inch. Mr. Inch. There you are. I am so sorry. Baroness von Trebitz was a good-hearted woman. She did so much for the museum. As you say, sir. And you? Are you leaving so soon? I'd like to go back to my hotel. These last days have been such a strain. First, you sneak into the museum without greeting me, and then you want to leave just as quickly? I didn't want to disturb you, and we'll have time enough tonight. Yes, you simply must come tonight. I wanted to present Baroness von Trebitz with a medal. Now you'll have to accept it. Of course, if you insist, sir. The Baroness paid for all this. Without her, there wouldn't have been an exhibition or a gala. She was very generous. Yes, she was. If you'll excuse me now... Constable Zellner, I want to thank you again for all you've done. You saved me, you could say. My pleasure. See you tonight. That must be the treasure chamber where the Eye of the Sphinx is due to be exhibited. The display case is already prepared. Exclusive and unique. The Eyes of the Sphinx exhibited together for the first time ever. Hopefully the visitors will be satisfied with a single eye. Otherwise, all this effort will be for nothing. Miss Miller, I'm glad to see you here. Oh, Constable Zellner, I heard what happened to you on board. Awful, truly awful. All's well that ends well. You are waiting for Professor Lucien? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow, you'll be sailing down the Nile, if I heard correctly. That's right, I'm sure it will be an amazing experience. But you don't seem to be very excited. Oh, but I am. It's very generous of Lady Westmacott to invite me, and especially Maddie. He'll learn a lot. But? Well, Professor Lucien offered to join us. Then Matt will learn even more. And I'm sure it won't be unpleasant for you either. No, I... I just don't know how Maddie would react if Edgar came with us. I understand. I could test the water to see how he'd feel about it. Would you do that? Oh, thank you, Constable Zellner.
Were you able to find out why Professor Lucien left the forecastle so suddenly last night? No, not really. We only had a brief conversation. He was still very nervous. He was like that on the train as well. Seems to be typical of him. It must be something to do with the burglary at the museum. It really affected him. But he told me not to worry about anything. He said, soon this would all be over. Really? How did he mean that? Oh, I... I didn't ask him, Constable. Are there other passengers from the ship here? Oh, yes, we arrived as a group. David Kreutzer, the violinist, was with us. So were Miss Myers and Mr. Inch. He seems to have gotten over the death of the Baroness pretty quickly. He seems positively relaxed. I've met him. He looks on the bright side of life, so to speak. Where is Mr. Kreutzer? He's over in the treasure chamber. Maddie is downstairs in the main hall. I'm afraid I'll hear the sound of something priceless shattering any second. Matt will be careful, Miss Miller. I'll continue my tour of the museum. Oh, yes, there's so much to see. Mr. Kreutzer will provide the background music tonight at the opening. Does he have anything else on his agenda? How are the acoustics, Mr. Kreutzer? Average. I wouldn't have expected anything else from a big stone cavern. How does it feel to have been accused of murder and to escape by the skin of your teeth? The whole thing could have had a bad ending for you. You didn't have an alibi. It was your gun. I must admit that I can imagine better ways to spend my time than being roughed up by Inspector Legrand. Your snooping actually paid off for me this time. Did you ever suspect me? Of murder? No. I think you're too intelligent to shoot someone with your own gun without arranging an alibi for the time of the crime. It seems like a lot of the passengers from the ship are here this morning. Nearly all of them. I had a brief conversation with the Baroness's butler. Between you and I... He seems quite happy to be rid of the old battleship. Mr. Kreutzer. Young Miss Mayers was here as well. Unfortunately, it seems like she's already disappeared again. Forget it. She's engaged. And the old witch with her caretaker and her brat are also here. What do you have against Lady Westmacott? The lady is more callous than the Queen of the Night. She chased her own son away. Ice cold. I met him briefly. Flew to America because he couldn't stand her anymore. Hmm. Did any of the guests behave suspiciously? Was anyone unusually interested in the treasure chamber or the security system? I couldn't say. I'm here to check the acoustics and then I'll come back for the gala tonight. I'm not interested in your detective games. The newspaper this morning is full of reports about the events on board. I've seen them. Someone must have informed the press directly from the ship. He probably got a pile of money for the story, don't you think? And again, they want to ruin my reputation. But no, Constable, it wasn't me. I didn't even consider it. And whoever did it was a bungler. Why? The story is in all the papers. You get more money if you sell the dirt to just one paper, as an exclusive. Who do you think it was? Hmm. The young guy? The stowaway? The captain didn't press charges and let him go this morning. But up until then, he was in the cell the whole time. Perhaps Miss Mayers. Maybe she wants to become an actress and needs a bit of publicity. Whoever it was, they wanted to make sure that the story spread and they weren't after money. So, what were they after? Well, I'm looking forward to the concert. It will be an unforgettable night. Kreutzer would be the perfect thief. He's fit. Charming, knows the right people. No wonder he was at the top of Legrand's list. On the other hand, the best thieves are people that no one would ever suspect. The uninteresting, the meek, the ones who are always overlooked.
I can't read what it says, but the cover features a dashing picture of Legrand. It shows an energetic young man photographed from beneath, against the sky. That's the look of a man who can catch a thief and murderer in a single day. Hmm. I don't believe that Legrand spoke to the press himself. He doesn't seem to like the attention, and he wouldn't falsely take credit for something he hadn't done. Ancient Egyptian jewelry. I like that golden signet ring with a scarab made of jasper. In ancient Egypt, these beetles were regarded as symbols of fertility. Nowadays, we just call them dung beetles. I suppose the beetles don't really care. Well-trained guards are usually the best security system, although they didn't manage to stop the Raven in London. The Gala will be crawling with guards tonight. The local police might also send some reinforcements. Well-trained... No, sir! I'm from the Swiss police. I want to check the security arrangements. No one may enter the treasure chamber before the delivery has arrived. Hmm. Desert glass. In the Great Sand Sea of the Libyan Desert, there's a region where natural glass is found. Nobody knows how it formed. The valuable material was often used for jewelry in ancient Egypt. This is Akhenaten, the only pharaoh whose portrait I always recognize. He has a very unusual head. Akhenaten was the husband of Nefertiti and the father of Tutankhamen, a famous family. But he went down in history as the pharaoh who wanted to eliminate the old gods and replace them with a single god. The priests took offense and he died of unknown causes. A figure of Imhotep, who comes in peace from around 2700 BC. The first polymath known by name, godfather of medicine, architect of the first pyramids, and according to legend, the inventor of Egyptian writing. He certainly achieved more than me in his life. He was a legend. The Greeks called him a god. The Romans still honored him 3,000 years after his death. Even today, scholars offer a drop of ink to Imhotep when they begin a new project. Really impressive. Several daggers in a row. 
The shapes and patterns look timeless, elegant. What does it say here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The dagger on the left is a replica of the dagger from the tomb of Tutankhamun. It must have been incredibly precious during his lifetime because it's made of iron. Thousands of years before the Ice Age, meteorites were the only source of pure iron. So a star that fell from the sky, bringing a substance that's harder than anything they'd known before, would have been a dramatic event. No wonder they used it to forge a weapon for the godlike Pharaoh. Aha! This shows how the ancient Egyptians were able to move the heavy blocks of stone to build their pyramids and temples. They used ropes, wooden sleds, and poles as levers. These exhibits aren't originals, of course. They're reconstructed, based on old pictures. Nonetheless, it's impressive how they managed to build monuments like the pyramids with such simple tools. Impressive, isn't it? Thousands of years old, and still beautiful. That it is. They dug it out of the sand near Thebes over 50 years ago. I was there. Really? I met my husband there. He was an assistant on the dig, and was ordered by the director of the excavation to take care of that writer. I financed many excavations in the following years, here in Egypt and in the Near East. I visited my husband, together with our son. It was the best time of my life. But a museum is no place for nostalgia. What can I do for you? You've had a long and successful life, Lady Westmacott. What's that supposed to mean, Mr. Zellner? That I should be ready to leave the stage? Because I'm not. Oh, I didn't want... I'm here because life is here, Constable. Or was. I have never lived as much as I have here. No fame, no money can buy that. I understand. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. Such an outburst isn't fitting for a woman of my age. And an English woman at that. Let's talk about something else. Your son. You haven't said much about him. Or perhaps you did. Just not by name. You're an attentive listener, Mr. Zellner. I was wondering why you knew so much about Miss Miller's unhappy marriage. I stopped paying his bar tabs. Stopped paying reporters to hush things up. He got to know her and went with her to America to start a new life. You can change your name easily, but not who you really are. He has my eyes, doesn't he? The part two novel is for him, isn't it? If I couldn't provide Matthew with a good father, then at least I can provide him with a good start in life. When I was working on the ship, I felt like one of the detectives in your novels. You were lucky. It was an unusual murder. Most murders happen in the heat of the moment or are committed by idiots. They are uninspired. But Gebhardt thought it through. He could have succeeded. Hmm. I don't know. He made too many mistakes. He couldn't have known that the Baroness, almost unconscious from the drugs, would lock her cabin door. But that was a risk. The plan was too complicated, and sloppily executed. You certainly are a harsh critic, Mr. Zellner. He could have shot her on the side deck and thrown the weapon into the sea. With no witnesses, no one would have suspected him. How boring. Or if it had to be a complicated plan, then he should have worked more carefully. Should have thought of everything, had a plan B in place. Maybe he didn't have enough time. He had only a few hours to plan and commit the murder. 
Still, he should have covered his tracks more carefully. The audio tape, the bloody glove, none of that should have stayed in the medical center. Do you think that Dr. Gebhardt was the Raven? Was? Do you think he's dead? The letter sounded like he committed suicide. There's your answer. Does that sound like the Raven? Being unmasked? Taking the easy way out? My sentiments exactly. The Raven wouldn't commit murder, get caught, and then jump into the sea. You don't want everything to be over, do you? It's my chance to do something great. It can't be over yet. At least you solved the murder of the Baroness. You're a hero. That's not how the newspapers see it. Nor I. Something's missing. I can achieve more. Careful, Constable. He who flies too close to the sun... Is that the myth of Icarus? To be honest, no. The story is Greek, and was only written down a thousand years later. I was counting on the dramatic effect. Oh, worked well enough. Let's assume that the thief is still out there. Who is he? If all this were a novel, then it would be the one you least expect. Is that intended to be a confession, Lady Westmacott? What do we know about the new Raven? He's a man who would stop at nothing. Must it be a man? And how do we know that it's just one person? There could be several people collectively pretending to be the Raven. So, we don't know anything. That's not completely true. We know that he or she wants the Eye of the Sphinx, and will probably strike here, assuming he or she hasn't already gone. It may be the end of the story for me, Lady Westmacott. Inspector Legrand will arrive soon and send me to the hotel. I return tonight for the gala, hoping all the while that the Raven does dare to attempt a burglary. Tomorrow morning, I'll have to return to Switzerland. What an unsatisfactory ending that would be. It wouldn't be a triumphant ending, but it could be worse. At least you'd still be alive, Constable. Will you attend the gala tonight, Lady Westmacott? But of course. The antiquities, the delightful atmosphere. And who knows, perhaps there will be another spectacular burglary. And your cruise? The ship doesn't leave until tomorrow. And believe me, I'd cancel the cruise for this. As always, it was an entertaining and enlightening chat, Lady Westmacott. I'm going to miss our little chats, Constable Zellner. Goodbye. She's reliving her memories. I better not disturb her. Lady Westmacott is an expert on Egypt. Many of her novels take place here. Lady Westmacott... I didn't have to pay for the cruise, and the French Embassy is taking care of the hotel, which is lucky. I certainly would have had a tough time getting the expenses back from my captain.
I can't tell whether Miss Miller and Professor Lucien would be happy together. I hope so, though. No one may enter the treasure chamber before the eye arrives. At least security seems to be tight. No, at least... I don't think I can talk to him. He's been ordered not to let anyone into the treasure chamber. And that's just what he'll do. Ahoy, Matt. The statue was talking. The statue was talking? Yes. And what did it say? It said it was... That's a very bad word. I know. And an English one. Don't you think it's odd that an old Egyptian statue speaks English? Don't you think it's odd that a statue speaks at all? That would have been my next question. And, uh, is the statue talking to you right now? Do you think I'm nuts? No, of course not. I just thought you might have much better ears than me. Ears that can hear statues. Some cop you are, Mr. Zellner. This is a mystery and you're just making jokes. You're right. It's just... Don't you believe me? Hmm... We both agree that a stone statue without a mouth or vocal cords cannot speak, right? Hmm... Yeah, I'd agree with that. Okay. That means you heard something else. And we have to find out what or who it was. Roger. I'm almost a bit envious of you. Going up the Nile on a ship, it must be great. Yeah, I guess. You don't sound so keen. I think my mom wants the professor to come too. And you don't? You can't tell me. What if mom marries the professor and doesn't work with the lady anymore? We'd have to move to London and I'd have to go to a new school. You like your life as it is, and you don't want to change a thing, right? Mm-hmm. But have you ever thought about whether your mother is happy? The world doesn't revolve around you, you know. If you're unhappy, you have to do something. Sometimes you have to take a chance. And in that case, you need all the help you can get. Do you mean mom isn't happy? I don't know. What do you think? This will all be over soon. Then I'll finally have time for you. I, uh... We wanted to head back to the hotel. Certainly. And tonight at the gala, I'll show you around the museum, okay? And... Have you made up your mind about the cruise? Well... Well... I don't really know.
Oh, come on, Mom. Who could teach us more about Egypt than the professor? Then it's settled. Uh, I didn't expect you to say that. Well, Mom, sometimes you have to take a chance. Well, who wants ice cream? Me! Actually, Mr. Zellner still owes me some. possibly leave without having seen the Eye of the Sphinx. Professor Lucien, your key, please. Uh, yes. Well... Come on, Professor. But you have to realize that... Uh... Thank you. Finally! What? What? Uh, um, Professor? I, uh... I wanted to give you this. After the burglary in London, I thought the Eye might not be safe on its way to Egypt. So I secretly took it when I was supposed to place it in the safe in London. How dare you? I felt that I should leave the jewel to someone I trusted completely. Myself. But the jewel was safe. From London to here, no one had an opportunity to steal it. I beg your pardon, my dear colleague. But if that were true, I wouldn't have had it. Congratulations, Professor Lucien. You fooled everyone, it seems. The honor is yours. Well, that's that. Shall I explain the security system to you, Inspector? The French ambassador summoned me. I have to get in touch with him. The press is besieging the embassy, and I have to answer their questions. But you absolutely must come tonight. The opening of the exhibition will be the highlight of the year, and you are my special guest. I will see what I can do. Zelna, will you have a look at the security precautions? We'll see each other tonight. Of course, but... Wait, Inspector. I'll join you. Well... Here we are. The inspector will answer the reporter's questions for the next few hours. And I... Well... I won't take up too much of your time. I'll take a look around and then go lie down so that I'm ready for tonight. What's that? A camera? The latest model. It's called... Video surveillance. I've heard about that. The images are recorded and can be viewed again later. That's right. Images from all three cameras are recorded in the card room. Wow. As I've said, we've spared no effort and no expense.
Many people picture a stone coffin when they hear the word sarcophagus, but this one is wooden. As usual, an ornamental representation of the deceased is painted on the outside in gold and other colors. What's in the other display cases? Other valuable originals. The eyes of the Sphinx would have been the highlights of our exhibition. Now that we only have one left, it doesn't really outshine the other valuables anymore. This room is full of world-class treasures. How is the display case protected? It's made of bulletproof glass that's several centimeters thick. You'd need heavy machinery to open it. But even the smallest disturbance of the display case will set off the alarm. Hmm, doesn't look half bad. A glass cutter wouldn't be much use. Is the display case anchored to the floor? Why do you ask? The Raven once stole a whole display case in St. Petersburg instead of just taking the jewels out of it. Such an attempt would fail here. The display case is bolted to the floor and weighs several hundred kilograms. This here, the gate, how does it work? If the alarm is set off, the metal gate descends. The same thing happens at the windows and the main entrance. The thief is trapped like a rat. As are we. Hmm. Next, I'll uh, show you our guard room, the heart of the whole security system. And after that, I'll have to excuse myself. Alert the guards. Then call the French Embassy. Le Grand needs to come. We're being locked out. Have a seat and try to calm down. Director Mohta? Director, how can I open the metal gate? He shouldn't have done that. Director! All the artifacts in the treasure chamber. He destroyed them! And I will bring him to justice. But first, I have to get inside. 
He's pale and shaking, probably in shock. Perhaps I'll get something out of him in a couple of minutes. Unfortunately, now it's just the Eye of the Sphinx. But it's a bit too late to change the banner. That bloody bomber! I mean, the chamber was filled with irreplaceable treasures! The gate is massive. I can't open it myself. This security gate is also closed. Once the alarm went off, no one could have left through the official exits. I'll leave the gate closed until Legrand has surrounded the museum with his army of policemen. I'll leave the... Constable Oliver! Don't move! What did you do? I didn't do anything. But I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna arrest you. Put the pistol away. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Robert, be sensible. Shut it! Is... is he dead? Just unconscious. Perhaps he can tell us who knocked him out. Excellent. Don't act all innocent. It was you. I was in the treasure chamber with the director. You, on the other hand, had every opportunity to take the guard out. I found him unconscious. I wanted to open the gates. And make it easier for the raven to escape? That does it. On the floor. Hands behind your head. Why aren't you in the embassy with Inspector Legrand talking to the press? What are you talking about? Legrand refused to do it. What? He told the ambassador that he'd rather walk through the desert for 40 years than give interviews for 40 minutes. We have to open the treasure chamber's gate. I suspect there's a secret entrance. No. We should open the main entrance and call for help. Robert, think. The raven is inside the museum and so are we. We could catch him, but we have to give chase immediately. The two of us can finish it here and now. You... you just want to confuse me. Robert, I don't think you knocked this man out, but neither did I. I was with the director the entire time. Ask him. That doesn't mean you aren't involved somehow. You could be working with the Raven. So could you. We can suspect each other, open the exits and offer the Raven every possible escape route. Or we can bring him to justice right here, right now. Oh, OK. But just get this straight. I don't trust you. I'll keep an eye on you, and if you try to get away... Understood. I'll try to open the gate to the treasure chamber now. I'd appreciate it if you'd refrain from accidentally shooting me. No trick, Zelna. And if we don't find anything in the treasure chamber, we'll open the gate at the main entrance and call Inspector Legrand. Of course. What are you doing? I was looking for this. Guards usually have more keys, but I doubt they need that many if they just sit in the guard room all day. I think he's okay. After we've checked the treasure chamber, we should call an ambulance.
locked. Hmm. Blueprints for the museum. Every gate seems to be controlled by its own switch. This should be the gate for the treasure chamber. Hmm, that's it. There's nothing more I can do here. Dead. We can't call for help. The line's dead. Does the alarm system call the police automatically? If not, or if it was also disconnected, I'm not sure that anyone out there knows what's happening inside the museum. I guess no one heard the explosion from outside. The treasure chamber doesn't have any windows. And the metal gates that came down could just be part of a test. We can't call for help. The line's dead. If not, I get... Hmm. Various bits and bobs for the office routine. Looks like even the guards can't avoid mountains of paperwork. Hmm. Maybe someone stirred something into the coffee and poisoned him with it. But the bump on the back of his head would indicate otherwise. A monitor, probably for viewing the security cameras. There are five buttons down here, three of them labeled. Camera one. Camera two. Camera three. This should be the one in the treasure chamber. As I expected, it didn't survive the explosion. All right, how do I... Hmm. Fantastic. That's me, with the director. Now it's getting exciting. What on earth? You damaged it. No, I didn't. Someone must have turned the camera off. Or... No, it's still recording, but something's covering the lens. There. That was the explosion. Mmm. Interesting. Why is it interesting? Someone was in the treasure chamber, and they disabled the camera. And? And, just a few minutes later, the alarm went off and everything blew up. The burglar hardly had time to prepare a targeted explosion, right? Ah. One more reason to go and see what happened in the treasure chamber. Constable Oliver can't honestly think that I'm the Raven. He must realize that I never had a chance to set a bomb. Although he may think that I could be an accomplice, as could he. Where do you think you're going? I'm searching for a way into the treasure chamber, which is exactly what you should be doing. I'll give you five minutes, then we'll follow my plan. Open the main entrance and call for backup. Let's hope for both our sakes that I find a way into the treasure chamber before then. I don't want to be responsible for the escape of the Raven. If you would be so kind. Ah, uh, uh, no, that won't work. I could have told you that.
That might help. Constable? It's... it's moving. Uh... Ah, no, not quite there yet. Hmm, the lances look sturdy, but they also seem to be firmly connected to the figures. Maybe I can break them off. On the other hand, there's been enough destruction today. Director Mokhtar, I can't open the gate. Is there another way into the treasure chamber? No, only one way. Only one. Locked. It fits. It has to work. Constable Oliver, could you lend me a hand? On three. One, two, three! <laughs> Director Mokta, hurry! Put something under the gate! Huh? Director! No luck. It won't open any further. Put it down, quick! That'll, uh, that'll hold it. I wouldn't bet on it. We should hurry. And inform Inspector Legrand. First, I'll get an overview of the situation. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to leave you all alone with a jewel, do you? I doubt that the jewel is still in the treasure chamber. But how? 
I'll be watching you. Then you'll have to come with me. If you haven't heard anything from me in five minutes, me, not Constable Zellner, then open the entrance and call for help. Understood? Okay. I suppose the camera was hit by a chunk of flying debris. Fortunately, the ceiling is quite high, and the gate was still ajar. Otherwise, nothing in this room would have survived the shockwave. It will take a long time to clean and restore everything, and some things are surely lost forever. Let's hope that at least some of the artifacts withstood the explosion. Why didn't he just drive through the wall with a tank? Reckless ignoramus. The remains of the cordon. Give me some light. That's how the eye left the treasure chamber. Oh no, uh-uh, no way. We've seen enough. The raven is gone. We need to get Legrand. Great. You happy now? You could say that. Will you give me some light? What do you think about this? Oh, it's a right mess. You can say that again. Would you give me your flashlight? You can't seriously expect me to say yes. No, not really. So at least give me a bit of light. This explosion was much more intense than the one in London, wasn't it? You can say that again. Imagine what would have happened if the bomb had gone off tonight. He didn't risk it. We must have made him nervous. <laughs> he couldn't have chosen a better time. Legrand isn't here. There are only a couple of guards and almost no witnesses. Still, I would have thought he'd wait. Remember the train? Our opponent has a penchant for drama. He's vain and wants as much publicity as possible. Uh, even vain people don't want to go to jail. True enough. It seems like the question of backup has been settled. We can't open the door from the inside. The director will surely contact the Grand. He'll be outside the door with a full squad in no time. I wouldn't bet on it. The thief was in the guard room and knocked out the guard. What was he up to there? He didn't disable the alarm. Maybe the phone lines. Some will notice the metal shutters on the windows. Sooner or later, sure. Until they do, we have time to solve the case. Okay then. So what do we do now? The cord is too short. It'd be no better than jumping. The clasps aren't really made for heavy weights, but I think they're strong enough.
Not the best rope in the world, but it will have to do. I let myself down into the hole with the rope. You can't be serious. This isn't a matter for discussion. I'm going down there. You can join me or stay here. But you, you don't know what or who is down there. That's why I want to go down there. Besides, maybe I'll find an escape route for us. Oh, all right then. Should, uh, should I hold the rope? I, uh, yes, thanks. I'm down. Give me some light, Robert. Are you all right? Yes, yes. Have you found an escape route? I'm working on it. Shine the light over there, please. Interesting. Documents, maps, letters, all of them at least 20, 30 years old. I wonder how the Raven knew about the secret basement. He must have done some research and then paid someone for the missing information. There are cracks in the wall and scarf marks on the floor. A secret door? And probably the Raven's escape route. Can you open it? There are several panels and a kind of a handle, but I can't turn or pull or push it. Something's written here, but it's too dark. Hurry down with the light. No, the Raven is trapped. We should call the ground. Do you think this door leads to a dead end? With every minute we hesitate, the Raven's trail is getting colder. But uh, we should take it one step at a time. We're alone and the Raven is dangerous. What would Nicholas Legrand do in this situation? Would he wait for backup and twiddle his thumbs or would he act? Oh, blast. Come on, Robert. Small decisions can have major effects. You hand me the light, and we could both be heroes. Or dead. Robert, I'll be careful. OK, here's what we do. I'll hand you the lamp, and you open the door. Then we guard the door and wait for backup. I couldn't have put it better myself. Right. Catch, but hurry. I don't want to think about the fact that I'm standing here in the dark, surrounded by mummies. That's better. Constable Oliver has his heart in the right place, but that doesn't make him the right man for the job. Everything okay, Robert? Or did the mummies get you already? Uh -huh. As I expected. Empty? Yes. The display case didn't survive the fall. The thief just had to pluck the jewel out. Actually, I thought the display case would survive the fall more or less unscathed. And three of the four windows did survive. Hmm. Hmm. A map of Cairo. 
It's covered with hundreds of small holes, and there are some pins on the floor. There's a date in the corner. 1940. What's that? Hey, don't go too far away. Come down and stop me. Interesting. Some kind of wooden hatch. There are two hinges on this side. There's a kind of metal hook holding the hatch closed. I am the talking statue. I really like to teach bad words to the little boys. At least that riddle is solved now. Peepholes, and I suspect yes. Mm. The raven couldn't have gone this way. We'd have seen him, and he couldn't have closed the bolt from outside. I'm positive he escaped through the other secret door. Why is it suddenly so bright down there? I found the light switch. The museum still has plenty to offer, despite the senseless destruction in the treasure chamber. Various containers. Maybe they contained funerary objects. The lids depict animals and a person. That alone doesn't really help me. Various con... Zelma? Is that you? It is I, the Raven. Did you find an exit? Uh, no. I'm still looking. The basement is quite large. Okay, okay. Don't go too far away. That is interesting. Four discs. Hmm. An extravagant combination lock. If it was just another language with a Latin alphabet, I might be able to guess the meaning, but I'm lost when it comes to Arabic. I'll write them down. It could be a hint about how to open the door. The lids depict animals and a person. That alone doesn't really help me. The museum still has plenty to offer, despite the senseless destruction in the treasure chamber.
various containers. Maybe they contained funerary objects. The museum still had... What are you doing here? You are just... I found another exit. The eye? Gone. The raven blasted a hole in the floor of the treasure chamber. There's a hidden basement beneath it. And... and the other treasures? It doesn't look good. Oh... oh no. Director Mokhtar? Isn't it about time to open the gates? I don't believe that the police have arrived yet. We can't risk giving the Raven a means of escape. That monster is surely long gone by now. Perhaps not. I have a lead. Do your best. As soon as the police have surrounded the building, I'll open the gates. Very well, Director. The basement below the treasure chamber. Did you know about it? I had no idea. There are maps and drawings from the Second World War in the room. Why? Well, it may have had something to do with the Resistance. Resistance? Egypt was occupied by the British. There was a movement for independence. The Egyptians collaborated with the Nazis? No, but the enemy of my enemy. So, the rebels reported information to the Nazis. And for that, they needed secret command posts. Yes. And what would be of more symbolic importance than the Egyptian Museum, witness to 5,000 years of Egyptian independence? Hidden rooms? Secret basements? What are they doing here? The museum was built in 1900 by a Frenchman who had a penchant for such things. Mystical torchlight ceremonies celebrating the builders of old? Freemasons? Things like that? Many great buildings have complicated histories. And today we're going to write a new chapter. I found this Arabic writing. What does it mean? It says the sons of Horus. And that means... Is this really the time to discuss history? It's important. Ah. The sons of Horus played an important part in the burial ritual. Four sons, four canopic jars. Vessels in which the liver, lungs, stomach and intestines of the body were stored. Are the four connected to symbols? A man, baboon, Jackal and Falcon. Look downstairs in the main hall. Sons of Horus. Vessels and intestines. Got it. It's going to be okay. Wait here. Where is the constable anyway? He's guarding the treasure chamber. He, he told me to call for backup if he doesn't come back in about five minutes. And that I shouldn't trust him. If you count on the constable, you're backing the wrong horse. He's Lacroix's man. Did you ever think about the fact that he's the only one who was present at both burglaries? Oh. Uh... 
I'd better leave him be if I don't have an important question. Still has plenty. Sarcophagus from the Old Kingdom. Hmm. Unknown ruler. Here we go. On the front, you can see the tutelary deities Amset and Happy. At a later date, it became traditional to show all four sons of Horus on all four sides of the sarcophagus. Each sun signified a cardinal direction. Happy, the north. Amset, the south. Kebeksenueth, the west. And Duamutef, the east. Each son of Horus, happy as the north. Must be the canopic jars the director was talking about. One jar for each of the four sons of Horus. Here we have Duamutef, stomach. The sign says Amset, liver. Happy, lungs. Kebeksenuef, intestines. The sign says, Happy, lungs. There are actually two of the four sons of Horus on the front side of the sarcophagus. A man and a monkey. Each son of Horus is associated. Happy is the north, Amset is the south, Kebeksenueth is the west, and Duamutef is the east. Each son happy is the north, Amset is the south, each happy.
here we have Duamutev, stomach. The sign says, Amset, liver. Happy, lungs. The sign says, here we have the four sons of Horus, Amset, Hapi, Duamutef, and Kebek Senuef are children of the god Horus the Elder and the goddess Isis. They are believed to protect canopic jars, which contain the internal organs of people who were mummified in ancient Egypt. As stellar gods, they are associated with the four cardinal directions. For that reason, their names were written on the four corners of the coffins during the Middle Kingdom period. Each son from He's up there, Robert. I know that. That may be. Go into the guard room and open the gates. Tell the director. Zelda, don't do it. It's too dangerous. You can't stop me. Not anymore. Two hundred steps at least. 
and a ladder. I'm too old for this. The chair is the only object that's not covered with dust. It seems like someone sat on it recently. Handcuffs. Not what I expected. Was someone interrogated here? Huh? Huh? The raven, if I'm not mistaken. Why don't you step into the light? Mr. Inch. Amazing. Truly amazing. I thought young Legrand would be my most dangerous opponent, but it seems I should have had more respect for age. And the bomb on the train? Did you want to kill us all? I knew that Legrand would be hot on my heels after the heist in London. He's a dangerous man, Mr. Zellner. He almost caught me once. Is that a reason to resort to murder? It wasn't my own reason? Am I for an eye, Constable Zellner? What about the murder of the Baroness? Was that also your doing? The death of the Baroness was never part of the plan. Dr. Gebhardt had a score to settle with her and got in my way. You didn't care about the key to the safe? I never wanted to steal the eye out of the safe. I always intended to strike here in the museum. What about Gebhardt's confession? A nice idea, don't you think? It keeps the inspector out of my hair. For a few more hours, at least. Until everything collapses like a house of cards. Why did you want to steal the second eye here? The eye was in the bank in Zurich for a long time. Impossible to get at. Then the safe on the ship in Legrand's cabin. Too complicated. I heard about the secret basement and found out how the security system worked. I would have preferred to save my performance for the gala this evening, but, well, events demanded a change of schedule. Not least because of you, my nosy friend. How did you do it? How did you plant the message on the safe in the train? How did you know that Gebhardt killed the Baroness? And the demolition charge below the treasure chamber? How... How did you manage it all, even if your arm isn't lame? Oh, it is, believe me. I needed help, it's true. A messenger boy to replace my arms and legs. A messenger boy? Ah, Adil. This could be interesting. He's quite talented, but unreliable. He has a mind of his own, his own plans. Don't you, Adil? I never wanted blood to be shed, but it's time to make an exception. Hmm. He only forgot one thing. I keep things firmly in hand. Always. End of story. As a ship's doctor. I am excited but nervous too. <laughs> I'm not exactly a champion swimmer. 
<laughs> if you wind up in the water on board a ship, something's gone terribly wrong. in the museum. <clears throat> that didn't quite go according to plan, did it? And I hate it when things don't go according to plan. <clears throat> you nearly killed them. You let them cut you. Uh, it, w it wasn't my fault. Scotland Yard was there. If I thought it was your fault, you'd already be bobbing in the River Thames with a bullet in your head. <clears throat> Someone tipped them off. I don't know who, but I'm going to find out. Where is the Jew? Ah, marvelous. But it's just half the set, and stealing the second eye will be more difficult than I'd anticipated. Why are we meeting here and not in Venice like we planned? London drew more attention than planned. They put Legrand on the case. Nicholas Legrand? He's searching the train. Should, shouldn't we postpone the plan under these circumstances? On the contrary, I gave him an anonymous tip. A tip? I told him that the train will be robbed. You don't seriously suggest that we steal the jewel right under Legrand's nose? Of course, because I'm an idiot! Our best bet is still Cairo. Everything is prepared. Mr. X will provide us with everything we need. As planned, I'll go to Venice together with the Baroness and board the ship there. You'll do the same, but as surreptitiously as possible. All right. And under no circumstances can anyone be permitted to discover our relationship. Understood. And the rest of the plan is as before? We just have to get on board the ship. Then I'll get in the car, and we'll meet in Venice. No, Legrand necessitates a change of plan. You'll go by train as well, and place this envelope on the safe as soon as the train halts in the tunnel. I'll cause a blackout so that you can sneak past the guard. You won't believe who's guarding the safe. That blasted Bobby from London. If you have any trouble, cave his skull in. And Legrand? You take care of the letter. I'll take care of everything else. The most important thing that no one recognizes you on the train, and that I don't get caught. What's the purpose of the letter? That's not your concern. I'd just like to know whether I'm risking my life for some game of yours, or whether it's worth it. Any one of my games would be worth your life. You just do what I tell you. Stick the letter on the door of the safe, or leave it on top of it, I don't care. But the letter has to be there as soon as Legrand shows up after the blackout to make sure everything is in order. Understood? Yes. What? Yes, understood. Hasn't the Baroness grown suspicious? She's wrapped up in a veil of alcohol, arrogance, and disinterest. Only flattery, gossip, and Belgian chocolate can penetrate its ideal conditions. I'll be glad to be rid of that old hag. She's my ticket to the most important museums in Europe. But these have been the longest six months of my life. How are the injured guards doing? How the devil should I know? You didn't need to do that. What? Save your bacon. I'd have made it out on my own. Oh, yes, the poor security guard. It really wasn't necessary. I'm such a naughty boy. I just don't want anyone to get hurt. Oh, please, please, don't be angry with me. I won't do it again. I don't know. We have the first eye, and we only just escaped. Tell me you're not suggesting that we should be satisfied with that. One eye alone is nothing more than an expensive bauble. But both eyes together are a legend. My greatest triumph. Shouldn't I put the eye somewhere for safekeeping? Just in case Legrand searches our things. I'll hide the jewel in the Baroness's luggage. I already know where. Legrand won't dare search her belongings, and even then, he'll never be able to open the secret compartment. 
Okay, so we'll see each other in Venice. And not sooner. Here, take your travel documents. We may not have an opportunity to meet in Venice. Okay, fine. Huh, that's the first change of plan so far. Uh, whatever. Looks like I'll be going to Venice by train. The crate must have had bananas or something in it. It's empty now. It's built out of thin wooden boards. Probably didn't have to bear much weight. Huh. I could probably pry the bottom boards off without too much effort. They're thin, and the nails are short. Perfect. It looks like a normal crate. It's now or never. Yes, sir. Let the games begin. Excuse me, gentlemen. Can't you see that I am talking to the constable? The train is leaving in a few minutes, sir. I have to ask you to board it now. We should get on. Perhaps we'll be able to continue our conversation during the trip. I won't stand in the way. <laughs> Where's my bag? You left it right there. I know that. I want to know where it is now. I, I don't know. I'll look for it right away. If you gentlemen would get on the train in the meantime... I will hold you and your employers liable for this. I'm sure he'll find the bag. Come on, Dr. Gebhardt. I will help you with your luggage. Fine. Sometimes you can find useful things in a waste bin, but this one seems to have been emptied recently. They won't let me ride along in the freight car, not even if I ask nicely. Burglary in British Museum, one casualty, 5,000 pounds damage, culprit unknown, Return of the Raven? I'd have escaped anyway, but Inch just couldn't resist playing with dynamite. I hope the security guard recovers soon. If I try to just get on the train, the conductor would probably stop me and might even turn me over to the police. I can't risk that. The conductor doesn't really seem to know where to search for the lost bag. Finding a particular piece of luggage at a railway station is like finding a needle in a haystack. You seem to be searching for something. Can I help? Go away. There's no money to be earned here. That's not what I mean. I just thought, if you're looking for a brown bag... Why? Did you steal one? If that were true, I wouldn't be offering to help you. I saw a little blonde boy take the bag. He ran off with it, over there. Really? Hmm. Thanks. Isn't that the bag? Where? Nothing personal.
Let me have a look. Damn, I can't let the professor see me. I shadowed him for days in London. He might recognize me. Decades to perfect it. Whatever. It'll be good enough for the people on the train. Professor Lucien hasn't slept a single night in the cabin yet. The towel is unused. Uh, if I twisted it, then I'd have a sort of rope. The sink. The sink. No, that won't help me now. Baroness's luggage takes up half a freight car. I don't think that the suitcase or the bag contain anything that could help me out. I'd better leave as little evidence as possible. Professor Lucio is at the door, and he won't give up until he opens it. That means I need another way out of here. open in the station, so it was a good way to get out of the train, and now it might be my only way out. <sighs> the window to the right should be the Baroness's cabin, and the one on the left is the saloon car. The roof could be my escape room. ventilation shaft supplies the freight car with fresh air. It also seems big enough to climb through. I'd say I found my way in. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed.
and everything's rocking and moving in here. Given these conditions, it'd take a while to pick the lock. That makes it too risky. I'm not bad at giving these... The safe that I need to put the envelope on is a freight car, but I can't just walk in like a delivery man. I should be able to move about freely in the train, as long as I keep away from Professor Lucien. The other guests don't know me, and conductors change several times during the journey. A new face shouldn't seem suspicious to anyone. Young man. Uh, yes, sir? Uh, tell me, when did they switch to self-service on the Orient Express? Should they not have informed the passengers about that in advance? Uh, forgive me, sir. I was... And what about my bag? Hmm? Did your colleague find it? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I expected as much. There will be consequences. And now, bring me my coffee. Of course, sir. Even pigs get to drink from the finest porcelain. Beer, wine, champagne, gin, brandy, and whiskey. <laughs> the richest snobs take the same medicine as the poorest slobs. Some people that need a drink to steady their nerves doing what I'm doing, but not me. I want a clear head if I'm gonna get this envelope onto the safe. Huh, a dish with old people's candy. Butterscotch, I think. Small portable radio. The reception is surprisingly good here in the mountains. I won't be able to use the radio, but the antenna, on the other hand, a thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that might come in handy. Locked. Let's see. It fits! Huh, a lot of odds and ends. A hairnet, batteries, a half pack of cigarettes, an unused toothbrush. The bartender probably has to serve as a jack of all trades, like a concierge in a hotel. So, is there anything useful? Here we go, a small shaving mirror. No, I don't need anything else. There's still some coffee left. A cup of coffee for the gentleman. Do you know what the problem with people like you is? Um, you mean our lack of a sense of duty, or our skin color, or a lack of respect for our elders? <laughs> we have so many flaws. if that's how it has to be. That should do it. That did the trick. Okay, the candy is so sticky, 
then it should hold the mirror without any trouble. <laughs> As I expected, it sticks. He didn't even want to hear why it took so long to get his coffee. He just wanted to tear into someone, just wanted to assert his will. It's a sad life if you have to pump yourself up by deflating others. the door. If only the freight car were empty, I could put the letter on the safe in peace. Okay, showtime. The woman's carer can't keep her hands still, so she's knitting. The old lady didn't get on in Zurich, and she doesn't look like someone from Nancy or Basel. I'm guessing she boarded in Paris. Uh, she seems familiar somehow. I've seen her someplace before. Maybe she used to be an actress, and I recognize her from photos. She has the confidence of someone who doesn't have to prove herself anymore. She's rich, that's for sure, but it's not just that. I'd better not talk to her. Her eyes are intelligent and observant. Something tells me I'd only make life difficult for myself if I try to pull the wool over her eyes. Can I bring you ladies anything? Is everything satisfactory? Everything is wonderful, young man. Very good. Got it. I think Professor Lucien is still in the hallway, trying to get into his cabin. I'd better wait until the coast is clear. The younger woman seems to be some kind of carer or companion for the older lady. I wouldn't like to be with her all day long. She radiates a certain restlessness and unease. I know people like that always have to be doing something. They feel useless if they don't have anything to do. I feel sorry for them.
Este. see anything but the rear of the car through the slots. Well, that won't do. What I really need is a view of the front. There's the guard. The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. I could shimmy down the shaft and hit him on the head from behind. Uh-oh. Are you okay, Robert? Nothing to report, sir. At ease. Any suspicious passengers come aboard in Zurich, sir? Hmm. Not really. It could be anyone and no one. But we've received support from the Swiss police. A certain Constable Zeller. Oh? Very motivated. Might get on our nerves. That limits my options. I can't overpower two people. I don't think I'll be able to slip into the carriage unseen after all. Oh, there has to be a way. I have to keep Inch happy. How do I get you onto the safe? Or on top of it? The safe is directly beneath the ventilation shaft. And Inch said something about a blackout and a tunnel. I could use the moments of confusion and darkness to toss the letter onto the safe. It might work as long as I manage to open the ventilation shaft and choose the right moment. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. You'll get it back in Venice. Frightening me like that. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past my window. Be off with you. Oh, man. these. Shoot, that was close. He left the lock open. How convenient. Let's see. A wrench, you don't say. This is too easy. I don't think I need anything else from the toolbox. And if I do, I know where to find it.
unscrew the screws, but I should only open the cover inside the tunnel. that on the floor. Yes, sir. That was close. If the second screw makes that much noise, it's over for me. No way. If the second nut also hits the floor, Legrand will know that I'm up here. My only option will be to jump from the train. several special keys on the keychain. This one should open the cabin door from outside. Lucky for me that I have the key and the people outside don't. That way the locked door will keep them at bay a little while longer. The Grand has retired to a dark corner and the Bobby is hiding behind some boxes. Le Grand obviously set a trap for the Raven. Unfortunately, the Raven knows. Is that what this is about? Does Inch just want to mock Le Grand? The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. from the toolbox should be useful. No way. If the second nut, my only option will be to jump from the train. I can't see anything but the rear of the car through the slots. And that won't do. What I really need is a view of the front. They should have been able to open the door with pliers. I think the coast is clear. Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. I assume Inch is also in the compartment. 
he'll probably find some excuse to sneak out to trigger the blackout and engage the emergency brakes. No idea how he expects to pull that off. He usually leaves me in the dark about such things. Even after months of partnership, he still doesn't trust me completely. Just a few more days, and I'll finally be rid of that creep. And until then, he has to burn in his own personal hell with the Baroness. A nice thought. Obviously, they managed to open the door. I wonder who or what the archaeologist thinks locked it. Did he connect it to the burglary in London? Uh, probably not. Professor Lucien is on his way to Cairo, just like the Baroness. They both know each other. She chairs the Friends of the British Museum Club. I hope he's too shaken up to leave his cabin until we reach Venice. Huh. Is this a Stradivarius or something like that? If it is, maybe I should take it with me during the blackout. With any luck, I'm gonna be a happy family man soon, and I'll need a few francs, lira, or marks. Self-control, side jobs always lead to complications. There are enough unknowns in our plan as it is. No need to add more. The violinist was already on the train in Zurich. Handsome devil. I'm glad my girlfriend isn't here. She loves to make me jealous. And once I'm raging mad, she leans forward and whispers one of those phrases that only she can say. He seems to be worried about something. So much the better for me. If he's absorbed in his own problems, he won't be paying attention to anyone else and won't be able to offer good testimony to the police. Paperback, a crime novel, I'd say. The Vicarage in the Mirror by Clarissa Westmacott. I'm not interested in crime novels, but I recognize her name. She's the most successful writer in the world. No, better not. If I'm gonna swipe something, it had better be worthwhile. We're still in the Swiss Alps. We should reach the Italian border in half an hour. Some maps, info for travelers, some pictures, and the schedule, all neatly hung up with magnets. Huh? Uh, won't work. There's a lock at the bottom of the window. Hmm. Maybe. The big map shows the different routes the Orient Express took in the course of its long history. It's larger than the other notices, and thus hung up with larger magnets. <laughs> I'll take one with me. Some of the photos are rather nice. Professional work. Climbing over the coal car is the only way to get into the driver's cab while the train is moving. I can't imagine Inch climbing over it to trigger a blackout up front. I bet he paid someone to do his dirty work. Inch almost never takes personal risks, and usually he tries to keep his hands clean. the magnet to the string. Done. A handy Swiss army knife, a gift from a good friend.
All right. We should. What? The light's gone out. Flashlights. Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah. What the dickens? It's... it's a... Away with it! Take cover! What's the meaning of this? What do you want here? I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I didn't ask how you were. I asked why you spoke to me in public. What was the point of the bomb? Isn't that obvious? I wanted to dispose of Legrand as spectacularly as possible. You almost disposed of me as well. Did I not tell you to deliver the letter and leave immediately? People could have died. But of course, that was the point of the bomb. I don't want to hurt anyone. You know that. And you know that I don't care what you want. Obey my orders and nothing will happen to you, and you'll soon be a rich man. I won't blindly obey orders anymore. I want to know what the plan is. You know as much as you need to know. We will steal the second eye in Cairo. Before the eyes of the world, the theft of the first eye got everyone's attention. Legrand's death would have increased the excitement immeasurably. But this will do just as well. We'll have a showdown instead. The Raven versus the Inspector. That should also electrify the press. Why are you doing this? I thought it was about the jewels. Why are we making life difficult for ourselves and attracting so much attention? It's about more than that. It's about performing on the greatest stage of all. About the end of a legend. You'll see when it's time for you to see. Until then, just do as I say. And what if I just leave? You knew who you were dealing with the whole time. I don't have time for your hypocrisy. You always knew who you were dealing with. If, for your peace of mind, you have to pretend to be innocent in this situation, so be it. But we both know that you begged me to let you in on the heist. And in this business, one must get one's hands dirty. But James! James! Where on earth are you? During the trip, we'll keep a low profile and steer clear of Legrand. I, uh... I lost the ticket and the fake passport. I swear, if my arm was still good enough to climb, I'd have disposed of you long ago. Oh, well. I'd prefer that no one see you while you're on board. Smuggle yourself on board and stay under cover until Cairo. Okay. And no more games. Nothing that Legrand, the police, or anyone else could do to you compares to what I will do to you if you don't follow my plan. James, there you are. Is the inspector to carry my luggage onto the ship all by himself? He thinks he knows me. He thinks I'm stupid and weak. I have him right where I want him. Here's a young thief who'll show an old timer how it's done. Even if it means a bit of solitary confinement.
I'm lying on a pile of clothes. Huh. Different fabrics. Some rougher, some softer. This one feels like a fine net. No, I don't think this will be much use. I hope the dock workers have left the cargo hold. I'd better just take a peek. Or at least, I'd take a peek if it were possible to open it. Ugh. This trunk is built like a coffin. Huh. Feels like metal. Angular. I think it's the trunk lock. There are small round bumps with slots in the middle. Could be screws. There are small round bumps with slots in the middle. Could be screws. Okay, where's the screwdriver? Uh, <gasps> knife? Uh, there's the screwdriver. So, if I just turn this... Uh, aha! You're kidding me! Seems to be a strap for holding something on the shelf above the trunk. <sighs> Unfortunately, I can't reach the clasp. It's fastened tightly, and I can't reach the clasp. Brilliant! Hopefully the clasp won't slip out of the box when I pull the strap. The pipe rolled up against the shelf, but it's still out of my reach. Uh, I can't reach it! How's that supposed to work? The strap won't tie itself around the pipe. And then it'll just tie itself around the pipes? Not gonna happen. Looks like I hit the jackpot on my first try. There's nothing more to be had. Looks like I... Two metal pipes. Stable about 10 meters apart. Hmm. All right then, I'll just drive the blade through the end of the strap. Hmm. It's worth a try. Ta-da! Uh, that should hold. My best chance. Steady as a rock. Elegance.
Oh, great. Okay, I'll tie him up and then get out of here before they start looking for him. And I already have an idea where I can hide. I can't imagine that you just leave. Yeah, and without saying goodbye either. <gasps> no need to be frightened, young lady. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. This is hardly the time or the place. What happened on the train? Nothing. Nothing bad. Everyone is fine. Inch is dangerous. I warned you. I know. That's why we're being careful. And you have a smart and handsome young thief at your side. And humble, too. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. What have I done to deserve luck like this?